All right, here is my um, patch explanation for um, the one I guess I've called Spider Dance. Um, I've got two basic things going on that are independent of one another. Um, one of them uh, being the variegate um, sequencing plats. This is run into on its own clock. Um, it's just got a couple steps here building up. As you can kind of see there, those, those are actually the positions of them um, all going into uh, the volt per octave of the plats on its um, uh, two classic waveforms. Um, the level for that though, uh, if you can trace this pink chord, um, is being controlled by uh, a couple different things here. Um, so the level here, oh wait, no, that one's coming, yeah. So that's coming up here. Um, and then that's coming out of this guy right here. This is channel four which is cycling a pretty quick uh, wave. Uh, you can see it flashing here. Um, flashes pretty quickly and then uh, slows down. It's flashing quickly when it's being, uh, its fall time is being changed uh, by uh, channel two, which is actually channel one being run through it. So uh, what's happening here is uh, channel one here is on a pretty slow wave. Um, but then I'm attenuating that backwards and attenuating or invert, inverting it a little bit backwards um, to turn down the volume of this one. Um, so it ends up with the um, with this all sounding like this. Or actually, no, it's not being inverted here. Right? So I've got the volume control right here, so you can hear and it channel one slash also channel two is controlling the fall time of channel four too. So you get this growing, growing amount of changing speed volume going into there. So that's how that's set up. Channel one is controlling the volume of what's channel four and channel one via channel two is controlling the fall time of channel four as well. So we get this kind of interesting sounding thing. So that's going on up here. Um, and then down here on the mini brute, I've got a, a bass drum that is sequenced here on this velocity track with just two envelopes. I somehow felt this being the downbeat just as it came through, but that's what it is. Oops, let's turn these down so we hear just the bass drum. Bass drum is just oscillator two, um, but I have it running it through VCA up here, um, just so that it, it's not messing around with the filter and stuff. So it's I've got um, it going out up to here, um, and that this guy right here, the volume's being controlled by this uh, velocity output envelope. Um, the pitch for that then also is this white cord, um, which is also being controlled by this output of the velocity thing. So um, this this track right here, sending these envelopes is controlling both the volume and the pitch of oscillator two, all controlled by my VCAs up here in my hexagram. So uh, I've got some other ones here that are a little bit longer of an attack. Uh, by pushing shift, you can change the attack time, uh, not just the decay time. So um, interesting stuff happening there with that. I've also got hi-hats that are coming out of the white noise here with the purple cable. Um, white noise is going in up here. Um, and then that green cable is gonna control its volume. And that is coming from the ADSR. So the ADSR of this is, I can turn that up up here with this VCA. So my ADSR uh, from the mini brute is um, doing my hi-hat sounds there with just the white noise. Um, I've got a little sequence going through here uh, in the pitches that are my main melody here. Ooh, let me turn that back down. I, have some, I just changed kind of randomly some of the gates to be of different lengths. You can see that across the way. Some of them are tied, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter as we go through. 
So, um, I have that going on. Um, the other uh, unique thing is that LFO2 over here um, is set on a sequence, sequence square wave, um, and that's controlling the decay time of my AD envelope, which is uh, doing um, the normal, uh, controlling the amp. So this guy right here, if we listen to the sound of that, let me turn off the hi-hat for a second. We'll keep the bass drum going though. So we've got this sequence going, but I can control how long the decay time is. Short decay, long decay, And then you get some interesting things. All right, the other, the other main interesting thing going on here, the other interesting main thing going on in here is channel three wasn't used on the maths. So I have it set to basically I found the way to uh, turn that down and this is plugged into the main FM for my main voice and I tuned it just right so that when this is going if I turn this knob all the way up it drops in an octave so this is basically to almost minus one volt um, and then when I crank up the FM here, it takes it down uh, an octave. So I got to have some fun with that too. So I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, both the channels then uh, from Platts and from all the rest of the stuff are heading into Ableton where I have um, some reverb on, on, on one of the tracks and a little bit of phasing and delay on the others, but nothing uh, too crazy um, as we go through it. So um, I think that's pretty much everything down here on the, in the sequencing thing. I've of course got my main notes going through here, uh, changed some of the gate lengths. This one's the one controlling my bass drums here with these envelopes. And I did uh, change some of the pressures here um, to give me some interesting cutoff modulation just a little bit with that pressure line. Um, I'm not sure how big of a difference it made, but um, just some, another interesting thing that I, that I worked in there as well. Cool, so hope you enjoyed the patch and um, uh, oh snap this is a long one but oh well they're, they're getting more complicated so um, hope you enjoyed and learned something <laughs>